Ron Merchant Bank's uh, Jaron Myerson joins us now for an outlook on monetary policy in Kenya. Uh, Jaron, uh, um, this is very timely because we've just heard from a bank, and I would like to hear your view on the same. Uh, most of the results have been attributed to the capping on the interest, um, uh, interest rates, um, and now we're seeing them look forward to a better year. But what are your thoughts on this? I know you've been tracking a lot on what's happening here. Uh, good afternoon, George. Thanks. So the interest rate cap is clearly the huge elephant in the room. Um, it's been going on for at least a year and it's, uh, it's clearly having a severe economic impact, uh, firstly on profit margins of banks, as, as you've seen from your previous guest, and secondly, feeding through into the real economy. So in the NPC uh, statement from the Central Bank of Kenya, we saw that uh, Credit growth had uh, declined to 2% year-on-year. Um, that's, that's quite disappointing for an economy like Kenya where you typically see credit growth in the mid-teens um, on an equilibrium basis. So the interest rate cap is clearly a hu huge issue. I think what's important about the decision from the central bank uh, to cut interest rates to 9.5% was the signaling impact that um, about what type of discussions are going on in the background between government and the central bank, the IMF and the Ministry of Finance, and uh, what the central bank's decision signals about their view on the progress towards uh, changing the interest rate cap in some way or um, abolishing it completely. So the fact that they were confident to cut interest rates suggests that they are extremely confident that something uh, will be done and uh, whatever is done will actually have quite a positive impact uh, on lending and uh, reduce a lot of the frictions that the interest rate cap has caused. Right, were you particularly surprised about this when the news came out that they were cutting the rate last week? Uh, we know for a fact here we were not. It had been long overdue and we had been campaigning by we, I mean uh, most of the industry players in Kenya, campaigned to the central bank governor and the Ministry of Finance to uh, at least allow them some space and this is what happened. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, I would agree with you. We were looking for a cut. Um, we, d we, weren't think we didn't think that um, were the interest rate caps to be in place, our view is that a cut is not going to be effective in stimulating lending to the real economy. Um, we agree with the Central Bank of Kenya where they constantly claim that um, rate cuts could actually have a perverse effect on lending due to the technicalities of it. So um, cutting interest rates w reduces the lending rate cap and it actually narrows the gap between uh, where uh, banks can lend to companies relative to where they can lend to the government. So it's actually, it ends up having a perverse impact on lending. So from that perspective, we were surprised that there was, a, there was a cut. But if you take a step back and look from a macro perspective, the last time inflation was at current levels, interest rates were a full 1% lower. Um, and we expect inflation to stay quite stable, uh, potentially declining even more due to a stable currency, um, due to uh, good, uh, good conditions, uh, good weather conditions. So uh, inflation is looks to remain in the bottom half of the 25 to 7.5% target band. So there's definitely a lot more scope to cut rates and it's very likely that interest rates will get down to 8.5% over the course of the next year. Um, however, if they continue to cut interest rates and nothing is done from the lending cap perspective, then we'll actually be in a situation where the central bank will be forced to, uh, in a weird way, hike interest rates in order to uh, bring back lending to the economy. Well, we are curious about what kind of an indication this gives on the outlook of the rate cap law. Uh, it seemed more like a trial and error, but given the size of the economy and the kind of variables that are in it, it mu it's probably one of the worst trial and errors we've had in our history here. Uh, yeah? I couldn't agree more, and I think the timing of the rate cap law was also quite unfortunate because you had the rate cap law come into place just before the election cycle. You then had a disputed election and a rerun. At the same time, you were having drought conditions in the country. So uh, effectively, Kenya was going through a perfect storm, and 
considering all the negatives that happened, I think the, the country's emerged from the storm in quite a good condition. If you look at variables such as foreign exchange reserves, they are still comfortably at six months import cover. Um, I think everyone breathed a sigh of relief when we saw that the IMF had renewed their precautionary facility for another six months. So there's that additional buffer. We've seen the currency perform quite well recently. Um, so if yes, the interest rate cap was a blunder and I think uh, everyone realizes that and I think uh, steps will be taken to reverse it. We've even seen in the commentary from the IMF around extending the, the precautionary facility to Kenya, we saw a conviction from the IMF that an uh, effective change to the rate cap regime would be made that will um, enable uh, monetary policy to now become a lot more effective. Now, before we move away from that conversation on uh, rate caps uh, and uh, possibly uh, central bank cutting, we have the same conversation happening in uh, uh, South Africa. We have the same conversation happening here. But for Rwanda, we do know that uh, they a very strong uh, look is that they might actually maintain it. Uh, and Kenya, we've already discussed that. But how do you make out uh, these three different areas, South Africa, Kenya, and Rwanda? That's a very interesting one. I think uh, we tend to look at East Africa um, more collectively. The, the economies are very closely linked. The, the currencies are very correlated. And um, in particular, I think the inflation cycles are extremely correlated due to, um, firstly, very similar weather patterns that affect food prices, which form a huge component of the inflation basket. Um, and uh, also, secondly, due to significant uh, intra-country trade between the regions. So um, typically what you find is that inflation uh, tracks each other in the different economies and uh, uh, usually if there aren't any particular idiosyncratic reasons, you find that monetary policy cycles across East Africa tend to be quite correlated as well. I think South Africa, on the other hand, um, uh, yes, I think we've, uh, we've also come out of a perfect storm um, I think the final straw was the uh, ratings reprieve from Moody's, uh, where we saw that uh, the Moody's uh, maintained our local currency rating at investment grade and actually upgraded the outlook from negative to stable. So everyone has breathed a sigh of relief. Um, we're not going to be seeing the massive bond outflows um, that everyone was forecasting. Um, so, you know, there's a huge amount of uh, nervousness is off the table and it's, uh, it's kind of free reign now for foreign investors to pile back into the South African bond market and also uh, free reign for the Reserve Bank to start cutting interest rates because inflation is a lot lower than it has been over the last few years. It's actually, it's actually quite, uh, quite low relative to um, what the Reserve Bank has been able to do. So. 25 basis points cut and potentially room for another one, but um, we need to watch out for uh, what happens to the Fed hiking cycle. Do they follow through with their forecasted four interest rate hikes for this year and uh, uh, how that is going to affect emerging markets and South Africa?